so the recording's on now. Welcome everybody. It's um, depending on where you're sitting in time and space. It's either Tuesday, December the 6th or Monday, December the 5th. Hey, Rena, welcome. And this is the Open Hearted Practice Group with mm -hmm. Jim and Jory. Mm -hmm. And we're, we, we zoom in uh, once a week from Maui, which is literally in the middle of nowhere. If you ever look at a a map of the um, of the world, and you'll see where most people live, which is in uh, Asia, Southeast Asia, the subcontinent of India and China, and then you turn the the, the whole globe about uh, forty percent from there. All you see is the Pacific Ocean, and in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, there's this teeny tiny little dot called Hawaii, and that's where we live. So, uh, and not only do we live in the middle of nowhere. In terms of the wow. ocean, in the, in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> yeah, and we also live in the middle of a very rural area. Um, so um, sometimes our internet uh, is a little spicy, or spotty, or something. And so if we Irregular. if yeah. we disappear, we'll be back as soon as we can. In fact, uh, Rena, with your permission, I'll make you a co-host, <clears throat> just in case. Uh, right now we're having good weather, but <clears throat> you never know. So I'll make Rena a co-host. Yeah just in case the things yeah, go Yeah, we've awry. got volcan volcanoes going off on a nearby island, so that can always affect us too in terms of internet. Yeah. I was wondering about the volcano eruption. Are you all feeling safe? Yeah, it's not on our <laughs> island. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's safe. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, relatively safe. Um, you know, our kinds of volcanoes are called shield volcanoes. <clears throat> And shield volcanoes are typically not explosive, <clears throat> like uh, Krakatoa or uh, you know Mount St. Helens. Those things, when they go off, they just go boom. But shield volcanoes like uh, Hawaii are leakers. They just kind of ooze. And um, as a as I heard um, through the grapevine today, one of the Hawaiians, uh, one of the local Hawaiian um, people, said something like, "They really take it as a, a good sign. There'll be more land for the people." You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, so they take the long view. Yeah, as long as it doesn't go down into a community, which is uh, which is possible. possible. <clears throat> yeah, but so far in no. Indonesia, a, a volcano has erupted and uh, people have been evacuated. Yes, that also brought brought some concern in me. Yes, right, right. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we live on. A, we live. It on seems a to be safe now, but it's it's. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It <laughs> yeah. We live right in the middle of the ring of fire. And uh, Mauna Loa, which is our, <clears throat> our our next door neighbor here, it's uh, the big they call it the Big Island here or the island of Hawaii, and uh, there are actually two volcanoes simultaneously uh, going off. That's the first time that's happened since 1984. Mm -hmm. It's possible that we could get something called VOG, V O G, and that stands for volcanic outgassing, and. Um, but it depends on which way the wind blows and we're we're so far away it probably won't affect us mm -hmm. but if it really got bad they would they would let us know and we would close the windows or do whatever we needed to do yeah so again the it's there is a <clears throat> volcano happening in hawaii but not on this island yeah yeah our volcano we live on a, every island in hawaii is a volcano <clears throat> we live on top of two volcanoes here but none of them they haven't gone off since the probably the 1700s and they're they're considered dormant but could be a surprise you never Crossing know my fingers <laughs> so let me just say a little bit about the open-hearted practice group if this is your first time here uh it's a practice group so we will pro we will provide you with opportunities to practice three uh three different ways with nonviolent communication we'll practice some self-compassion today and we'll start with a self-connection exercise in just a few moments a play a chance to practice nonviolent communication with just yourself then we'll make small groups for you uh, if you don't want to go to a small group for whatever reason you can put an equal sign in front of your name and that lets me know not to put you into a small group and in a small group we'll let you know what to do but it's just a chance to connect and hang out with human beings uh, and uh, use the the NBC skills that you've been accumulating uh, over the years, if you've been practicing for a long time, or the ones you learned last week or earlier today when you made, maybe you first read the book or whatever, there's no expectation that you that you know anything about NBC to join this class. The only prerequisite is that you're a human being. And we 
often have people from various places around the globe. So if your mother tongue, your your the the language that you live with and grew up with is different than English, you can put that into just past your name and we can put people together who uh, speak a particular language. It's particularly helpful for those people who have difficulty with English. So even if you're fluent in English and and if you're willing to possibly be in another your own tongue or in another language, let us know. I see at least one person who has, I think, I'm not sure if that's Japanese or, or Chinese here. I don't know who that is yet. I don't know. Is that Japanese or? It could, it could be could Chinese be, or Japanese. Or Japanese. Hard yeah. to tell yet. Don't know. Hi, Joya. Welcome. And uh, more people are arriving. So I'm going to uh, invite Drury. Unless there's anything you want to say by way I'd of like check-in. I'd like you to do the self-connection okay. exercise. If you want, right. I'll keep working on this. All right. Great. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So unless there's an objection, we'll go ahead and start with a little self-connection. Chance just to use nonviolent communication with yourself. You're already doing it. Just notice what you're already doing. Just become more fully aware of your direct experience right now. And you're hearing the sound of my voice. Maybe you're looking at a Zoom screen. Maybe you're aware of other um, senses activated in your body, other perceptions. Maybe you just took a sip of tea or a bite of food. Maybe you're aware of an aroma in your environment, the smell of cooking food or something else. Maybe you're aware of the texture where the skin, your skin is touching your clothing. And notice it's like a kaleidoscope. It's ever changing. Our our experience of our perceptions is constantly changing. And that which is observing all this, that's you, right? You're the one who is observing what's actually happening in your experience right now. And so we're going to care for you during this class and invite you to care for yourself during this class. So if you're comfortable, you can allow your eyes to close and just relax a little bit and notice your breathing. You can start becoming aware of sensations in your body the sensation of air going in and out through the tip of your nose or through your mouth. The sensation of your chest or your belly moving with each breath that you take. You may be aware of other sensations in your body. Like um, maybe a sense of excitement or calm a sense of constriction or openness, warmth or coolness, tightness or looseness. Again, a kaleidoscope, right? It's just constantly changing. Mm -hmm. The fancy word for what you're experiencing right now is called interoception. It's this ability that human beings have to track the sensations in their body. Very important skill in nonviolent communication because these sensations are giving you information. It's like the dashboard of a car or the instruments on an airplane. Sometimes we add some interpretation to these sensations and we call it emotion, like happy, sad, 
frustration or anger, irritation, or peace. So as you scan your body for sensations and emotions, just notice whatever you notice. Each of these uh, sensations is pointing you towards a need. Something that's important to you. So just consider that question for yourself. What's important to you right now? What needs are you hoping to meet by being here with us today? I'll make some guesses just in case um, having a needs vocabulary is new for you. Maybe you're here for learning to contribute to your need for learning. Or maybe it's about growth, personal growth, growth as a human being. Maybe it's about community. Some of the people on this call have been here almost every week for two and a half years, almost three years now. Other people are brand new. Maybe you're looking for a sense of belonging or just information. You're curious and need some information. Is NBC a fit for you? Maybe you're needing some empathy. Maybe it's something else, not on my short list here. Whatever it is, it shows up in the body as an energy. Just notice that, name it if it has a name, and just be present. Sometimes it is helpful to, for me put my hand on my heart it just helps me to kind of tune in to my direct experience. And enjoy, enjoy this energy that's flowing through you. Then the last part of nonviolent communication is the request. In other words, what would make your life more wonderful for the next couple of hours? What could you ask of yourself to support you in getting the needs that you identified met today? Maybe it's a request of me, or maybe a request of Jory, or Whatever it is, just bookmark that request for yourself. There'll be a chance to make requests a little bit later. As a final step, if your eyes have been closed, you can allow them to open. Nine. Look around at the screen again. Some new folks have arrived. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate you being here. Supports needs met for me for community and belonging, connection, contribution. So in a moment, I'll open up small groups. Um, I think most of the groups are, are three. Mm -hmm. And it might be one group of two. And um, what do we do in a small group? You're just going to hang out. So introduce yourself. So it might look something like this. Hey, uh, my name's Jim. I live in Maui. And I'm feeling uh, after that exercise, I'm feeling um, kind of excited about our topic today and 
curious about what will happen and um yeah so i think the the, the needs most alive in me are learning and contribution mm -hmm. and how about you yeah thank you for passing the baton here um i feel pretty exhausted today mm. I'm so glad that you're such an ever ready bunny <laughs> so that I can just sort of lay back and take it easy. Um, so I'm glad to be here and glad that it, uh, it's not falling on me to do a whole lot. So, mm. Thank you. Yeah. And then we go on to the third person. If you get finished, uh, there'll be nine minutes plus one at the end. If you get finished, you can go around again. Maybe some something else comes up for you that you want to share or something like that. So it's just your time to, to be uh, be together. The, the main request we have is that in the small groups, which are not recorded, that you turn your camera on. It really supports a sense of connection and uh, safety. So if you're willing to put your camera on in the small group, we really appreciate that. We also realize that some people don't have cameras, so we understand that. And so after nine minutes, uh, you'll see, well, when we open the groups, you'll see a little timer in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. And it'll count down from nine minutes. And then when the group ends, there'll be one extra minute. So you don't have to do anything. You can sit on your hands. You don't have to push any buttons. You don't, you, you just enjoy that last minute to, to finish up anything that needs to be said. And then we'll all magically zoom back here. And with that, we'll go ahead and open the groups and see you back here in nine minutes, 10 minutes. All righty. See you soon. Keep going. Oh, keep going. Oh, 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 oh. Don't move anybody. Okay, good. Yeah, there's one Can group I... of two, I think. All right. This meeting is being recorded. Yes, this is being recorded. This part is being recorded. <clears throat> so uh, thank you all for trying that out. I'd love to hear about how this was for you. If anybody has any reports you'd like to say to the um, to the large group, you can do that. You can and there's you can actually try this new thing uh, that Zoom has now. You can raise your hand in the traditional way, which is at the bottom of your screen. There's a thing that says reactions, but the new Zoom software, uh, if it works, if you go like this. It might see it as your hand being raised and it might actually uh, trigger it. Um, it happened to me this morning. I didn't mean to do it on another Zoom call, but it might work. It might not work, but uh, it's not working for Jody. But uh, I, I see you, yeah. Jody. I'll, I'll come to you next. <laughs> well, she's, I don't know if she wants her hand up or if she's just playing. No, I did. No, okay. I did. Okay. Uh -huh. well, let's listen to Vivek no, first and then come to Jody. Go ahead, okay, Vivek. Perfect. Hey. So I really enjoyed the experience. As it turns out, I actually got paired with um, somebody who was an empathy buddy in the NVC class, which I just finished leading up to this course. So yeah, it was a very fortuitous pairing. Wow. wow. How cool is that? Yeah, what a surprise too. What are the odds of that? All right. <laughs> About one in uh, 37. Oh, thank you for answering that question. <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> and uh, Jody? Um, I realized upon talking to the people in my group that I was talking about, I really want to learn about how to apologize. And that's the subject. I, I think that's the subject. And uh, the reason why, why why I'm speaking is because it was interesting while saying that I realized and what I said was, you know, I realized that sometimes I over apologize or apologize for what's not me or out of fear. And it, I just really want to learn more about, you know, how to apologize, but also how to not over apologize or take on too much or out of fear or you know dealing with anyways other subjects like trauma or trauma bound boundary bonding so i just learned about that but 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 how to just you know really take take what's mine and how to how to deal with that it was just interesting just to, as i was speaking about it to realize that 
How's it going? Great. It's Sounds wonderful. Hell. You're right here in the right place. Yep. Okay, good. All right. Anybody else have anything you'd like to share? I'm really enjoying uh, hearing my sense of connection is growing. Go ahead, Rena. Yeah, I was also in touch with, uh, of, you know, fear motivated apology and uh, also kind of holding that fear through the body sensations uh, when we, you know, did the morning practice. I think uh, also to acknowledge fear. Um, so that was something that I, yeah, it just made me feel so warm and kind of real. Oh, you know, I was, I had access to all more parts of me, which uh, because of fear had kind of frozen or, you know, uh, yeah. So um, Jody, when you shared about apologizing because of fear, um, I also touched that layer of fear helping me to connect with more parts of me mm -hmm. yeah. in the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So thank you. Thank and Jim, you. could you make me? Uh, yeah, I already did. Again. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rena. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Before we dive into the lesson. Okay. I'd we... like to share, but I had trouble raising my hand. <laughs> oh, please go ahead, Mary. Yes. Thanks for speaking up. It's Mary. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. Um, my name is Mary, and I. Uh, the reason I came uh, was uh, uh, someone else suggested uh, this particular group for nonviolent communication, and I've had I've struggled with um, rage most of my life, and you know that it's like a volcano erupting, <laughs> um, and so I tried lots of different things, and I thought, you know, what have I got to lose? Um, maybe it will help because I've had I've been married and divorced three times. Um, and a lot of it is based on my rage. And the only ones that I've seemed to be able to not do that with is my adult children, but I did do it when they were little. So I just want to learn another way because it's, uh, it's also exhausting. Yes. <laughs> so thanks. Yeah. I really catch your, your longing to have more choice about how you express your emotions that you'd like to have more, a more effective and more connective way of expressing it when your needs have not been met. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Mm, yeah. So well, welcome. Yeah. Mary and all the people here. Yeah. So anybody else before we dive in? Okay. So um, let me share my screen with you. And the topic of today is a beneficial regret. This is a, a, a term that uh, Jory and I be, first became aware of. Uh, we, we may or may not have been certified trainers at the time, but we went out. Uh, I'm looking at Jory to see if she remembers this experience. We were living in Albuquerque at the time, mm -hmm. and we went out to Placitas, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful world, word. It means a placid place uh, just uh, north of Albuquerque, where we lived. And it is the name of the town. <laughs> yeah. And um, we went there, and it was in someone's living room, and it was uh, someone in the tradition of um, Thich Nhat Hanh who was also an NBC uh -huh. uh, practitioner. Uh -huh. And she the the title of her talk in her little workshop was Beneficial Regret. Right. And we said, wow, I just really love this, this way of framing um, an apology mm -hmm. uh, because there's no sense of anybody being wrong with it. And it was so in alignment with what we were learning from Marshall Rosenberg mm -hmm. at the time. This is early days for us back in maybe around 2002, 2003. And so we started calling uh, this process beneficial regret then, and then it got published as part of this uh, body of work that we did called the Pathways to Liberation Matrix. And then either by design or accident or, or, or co-discovery from other trainers, now beneficial regret is, is a very common way uh, within the NVC community of talking about mm -hmm. what, ha how do we address um, mm -hmm. uh, situations when we missed an opportunity to meet needs, and that how can we do that uh, without um, uh, implying wrongness uh, uh, about anything that we have done uh, in in terms of that. 
And so uh, that's what we're going to be uh, working on today. And so um, the, the first thing I'd like you to think about is just what comes up for you when you hear that phrase, beneficial regret. And maybe write yourself a, a little note about what it means to you, these two words, beneficial and regret. I'll be quiet for a couple minutes while you do that. If you'd like to add what comes up for you with this phrase in the chat, that's one way that you can contribute and connect with people. Not required, but if you want to do that, that's fine. Anybody want to say anything about beneficial regret? I like I like the term beneficial uh, because it gives us a chance to uh, be a benefit as opposed to guilt, which is non useful in any level, and uh, focusing on regret, which is uh, focusing on impact instead of intent. Thank you, Tanya. And uh, Vivek? I like this. I remember somebody was asking, how do you view the past? And I think the answer which came up for me is as a teacher. So a regret is about something which happened in the past. And if you consider if you use the past as your teacher, then even previous failures all exist to teach you something which you can learn from. So that's what comes up for me when you say beneficial regret. Thank you. Yeah, that's in harmony with my experience. Okay. So today uh, we're going to explore uh, beneficial regret through three, if we have time, we might have to finish this next week, it just depends on how the time goes. But we will um, explore this idea of beneficial regret um, through three different lenses <clears throat> of nonviolent communication, the same ones that I mentioned at the beginning of the call, <clears throat> but changing the word self connection to self compassion, to really apply the tools and the consciousness of nonviolent communication in a compassionate way with ourselves. This is how we turn guilt and shame into regret is with compassion. And we'll we'll go through that part first. And then we will have an experience um, uh, of empathy for the in the influence that we might have had on another person the effect our our actions or inactions might have had on somebody else. <clears throat> and then finally, what we can do to move towards expressing our regret in a way that supports connection. And so we'll start with some self compassion. <clears throat> and we'll begin with a quote from the founder of nonviolent communication, Marshall Rosenberg. This particular quote, which I'll read to you in a moment. Um, uh, lived, lived on our refrigerator for about 10 years as a, as a constant reminder of this massive shift in consciousness that's offered by nonviolent communication. I'll read it through twice so that you can really savor it. We never do anything wrong. We never have. We never will. We do things we wouldn't have done if we knew then what we're learning now. And the fun thing about life is that will always be the case. 
We never do anything wrong. We never have. We never will. We do things we wouldn't have done if we knew then what we're learning now. And the fun thing about life is that will always be the case. I'll put that into the chat for you as well. Maybe. Try that again. This is kind of a radical idea. So take another two minutes and write down what comes up for you when you consider how this, um, this teaching from Marshall lands in your heart or in your body. I'll be quiet for about two minutes while you reflect and write a note to yourself. Again, I want to offer space for anyone who'd like to share what comes up for you as you as you be with these words. If you want to keep writing, of course, keep writing. Yes, Anita. So, yeah, hi, good morning to all. Uh, what came up? As soon as I read the quote and I reread it is that, uh, yes, if I would have known all of this before I came into this NVC community and the learning and the growth that's happening in this moment and in this now, I would have done things differently as a parent. And my child who thinks that I have not been a good mother and I'm being very vulnerable in sharing that, things would have been different today. And uh, he blames me for accepting the the terms and the conditions that were ruled by my ex-husband in wanting the divorce calls me selfish. So I'm being blamed and accused. And um, sometimes I, I jack all in myself and I blame myself for having done that, for having accepted all the power over and all this takes me to that uh, I'm willing to learn and to unwind all that blame that is going on within me for having accepted those terms and conditions and the power over. 
Yes, thank you. You're welcome. I really catch that that um, NBC has been an awakening for you in terms of of seeing that you might have made some choices that if you knew then what you've been learning since you would have made a different choice and it might have had a different influence on how how your relationship uh, relationships with family members might have gone and that you're I catch yes. your excitement about learning this now you wish you would have known it then of course uh, but uh, at least now you I catch your excitement and the relief that now you're learning something that you sense might be more life serving from now on yeah yes thank you thank you and Eleanor You're still on mute, lower left-hand corner of your screen there. Down at the lower left-hand corner of your screen, there's a little thing that looks like a microphone. There you go, you did it. Yeah, you did it. Well, well, I, I had um, a feeling of relief as you read that and, uh, and kind of an understanding and kind of like a, pr a promise, a feeling of promise of good, day, good things, you know? And then there's this little sneaky shadow off in the corner or behind a cloud there that says, uh, well, the phrase letting myself off the hook came to mind. And um, I, I, I don't know if that's an age thing where we're, we're, we're so made to feel so strongly wrong that, that it's, uh, that's going to hang around until we really fully absorb this or what? I catch your curiosity about that. That first there was maybe a, a, a bit of amazement in you of how this, this lives in you. Are you letting yourself off? Does this like give me permission to just be uh, fill in your blank with whatever kind of um, jackal word might uh, might might come up? You know, is it just give you carte blanche to behave any way you want to? Does it get you off the hook? Is the words that you used? And um, oh no, more, more like forgiveness. Forgiveness. Yeah. Can I can I really forgive myself? I mean, is that really okay? Kind of thing. Ah, yes. That's yeah. a wonderful, wonderful question to wonder about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give yourself permission to forgive yourself? Is yeah. that it? Yeah. yeah. I'm hoping by the end of the class, you'll have the capacity to give yourself permission to forgive yourself. Yeah. And it might be a process too. Thanks, Eleanor. Sarah Joy? Um, it brings up for me um, the idea of right wrong thinking and um, that um, that I think personally, you know, I can make a mistake and not judge myself for it. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of people can make mistakes. Maybe I thought I didn't stop to think quickly before I crossed the street and, you know, I something happened. I lost my groceries. You know, I got, you know, my I and my bag of food fell out on the on the street, and maybe people had to stop short. You know, I mean, that's a mistake. I, you know, and um, I would regret that. Someone else might blame me and and say I'm I did that wrong, and um, so I I wouldn't mind your talking a little bit about that, um, and so I can have a better understanding of this. Yeah. Yeah, well, rather than talk about it now, I, I would, uh, I, I think that's a very um, um, uh, important issue, or issue's not quite the right, it's something really important to explore. And I'd rather, rather than me tell you what to think about it, I'd rather have you come to your own conclusions after we finish going through the process. So I love the question. I say one, two, three, four more questions. And now I get to that place where I'm really torn. I want to hear everyone's voice, and yet I want to also make sure there's time enough for practice. So um, uh, I want you to keep your hand up. If you, if you have something that you really have a kind of a burning desire to share now, but if you think you can wait uh, for until the next time I open up the the comment space that that might support us in having more time for learning, but it's totally up to you. I want you to have choice. Go ahead, Mary. 
hi, I was going to lower my hand, but I can't figure it out. Anyway, I um, can take care of that for you if you'd like. No, go ahead, Mary. Oh, okay. Sure. Well, I think what I my what my first thought was. First, I was an unwanted child. My father is European. He only wanted sons. He had five daughters and a son. And I was always told that I was the bad child, the bad seed, the juvenile delinquent, which I was not. And so I'm, I'm trying to understand how that, how that, how I can make peace with that. And I guess I could end with that. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. A wonderful question to ask. It really is. Yeah. And, the, and I just want to acknowledge what goes through the environment, um, there are certain environments that many of us have been in and it takes some healing and that's what we're doing here. So thank yeah. you for sharing. Uh, Isabel. Yes, thank you, Jim. Um, just wanted to add a thought that I wrote down earlier when we when you asked us to put down what we take from beneficial regret and that is that regret is something very subjective emotional mm -hmm. um, that that it comes from within it's not something that others can give us so it is very deeply personal and subjective not something that somebody else can plant on they can try yeah. But I think I my attempt is in answering that question of how others, you know, our judgment of others. So we, the place where we reach to regret is only when we have accepted our own part and it is in pain. Yeah. It's not something that others push on to be regretful. Mm -hmm. You can give remorse, but regret is subjective. That's mm -hmm. my answer. That's my take. And so, thanks, Isabel. That's what I wanted to add. And there's one more hand that came back up. One more, Vivek. Yeah, I lowered my hand, but I put it back up because I think I just wanted to share this in context. I'll keep it very short. So, with this thing, which one of my oldest son, he's nine. And so, one of his counselors, this thing they shared with us in the context of our relating with him, but it just occurred to me is just as relevant in relating with ourselves. What she said was, remember that they are doing the best they can with the tools that they have. So if they're not behaving skillfully, don't berate them, try to give them better tools. For example, if somebody had a nail and was trying to drive it in with a plastic spoon, yelling at them is not gonna help them. Giving them a hammer will help them. And you can apply that to yourself just as much. Well said. I like that teacher. Thanks, Vivek. <laughs> okay, so let's let's continue the practice. <clears throat> Write down an observation of an action that you took that you feel some guilt about having done. Describe the action without evaluating the rightness or the wrongness of it, just the facts, not the story or the justification or the wishes, just the action that you wish you had not taken. Mm -hmm. So just naming the action. So, and do it as observationally uh, as you can. So for example, <clears throat> uh, earlier today, um, Jory, actually it's just before the class, um, we were trying to deal with the lighting situation here. And um, I, I, um, I can't exactly, how would I describe it? It was like, um, I guess the one simple observation would be, I forgot to tell Jory that there was um, um, some bad fumes, some fumes that might be dangerous in the bathroom because of a, of a cleaning solvent that was in the bathroom for our house guests. We were cleaning the bathroom. So I just forgot to tell Jory. It was not something that I did, it was something that I didn't do. So that could also be an inaction. Could also be uh, what something that you might write write down one sentence about.
So if you've finished, then you can check what you wrote and maybe you need to do some editing. If there's any sense of rightness or wrongness. Or about, should. <laughs> or shouldn't. Yeah. Anything like that that's in what you wrote, just cross it out. You don't need that for this for this part of the exercise. It might be useful later, but just see if you can delete anything that's not something that you see, hear, smell, taste, or touch. Hmm. This is good practice in making uh, the distinction between uh, what's um, an observation, which is what's reported by the five senses, and what we think about the observation, which is something that happens in our mind. We call it an evaluation. There's nothing wrong with evaluation. It's just something different. Yeah, it's enabling us to get beyond the right wrong thinking into just noticing. <clears throat> In fact, it's the evaluation that makes you feel guilty, by the way. It's not what you did that makes you feel guilty. It's your evaluation, perhaps <clears throat> the agreement that you received from others <clears throat> or that you got from others first, that you did something wrong, that uh, when, you, when your evaluation uh, in your mind agrees with the evaluation of others, that's what causes your guilt. It's not what you did. Some of you might be done, some of you not done yet, that's fine. We'll just, for those of you who are done, we'll keep going. <clears throat> when you think about doing this, feelings might start arising in you. So the first step is always just to notice. Notice any physical sensations. And just allow them to be. Notice any emotions, just allow them to be. Let the thoughts go, let the feelings be. And if you want to name what you're feeling for your practice, that's, you can just write that down as well. But the most important part is to feel it, to let yourself feel it. This is, this is compassion, to be, to accompany yourself, to be with yourself as you feel these feelings. Carrying on, if you're ready, if you're not, just stick with whatever step that you're on, but I'm just going at a pace so that we can finish the practice, but do take care of yourself as we do this. 
Consider what need you are trying to address when you did what you did. In other words, what was your positive intention? <clears throat> so back to just sharing about my experience. I, I forgot to tell Jory about this uh, ozone gas that was in our bathroom. And my positive, in, uh, and I, I, feel, I feel some regret, some sadness, um, frustration about that. And my positive intention was I was, I was uh, trying to get the Zoom call going mm -hmm. at the same time. I was trying to focus on the Zoom and I just simply forgot the other piece. So what need were you trying to meet? I'll put a needs chart up for those of you who might need some support from a chart. There's no right or wrong answer to the feelings and needs question. Don't have to share this with anybody. It's just your own, as Isabel pointed out earlier, it's your own subjective experience. If you're connected to needs, then you can savor them in the same way we did at the very first exercise. Savoring just means to enjoy something, to extend the pleasure of something. This, Marshall called it beloved divine energy of needs. This is flowing through your body. It might be experienced as a tingle or as warmth or as a buzz or as pain or as pleasure. You just savor whatever comes up for you in relationship with this need. This is where the power of this self-compassion process comes from. It's just being fully present with your feelings and needs. So we pause here to see if there's anybody that has any questions about these, these first three parts of self-compassion. I'm mostly interested in, uh, in first, did anybody get stuck with anything? And you might need some support. That's a good sign. I did. <laughs> it's Mary. Yeah, go ahead, Mary. Where'd you get stuck? Uh, um, I couldn't even, I, I feel like I've done so many things wrong that I couldn't even pick one. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, oh. that, that, that's definitely a place to get stuck, <laughs> you know? And so um, <clears throat> I know it's your first time here. So I, I, my regret, now I have a new regret. I wish I would have said something like, pick a teeny tiny thing. Just one little teeny <laughs> tiny mistake that you made, maybe even earlier today, 
you know, like I picked you left your keys somewhere or, you, you know, you hid your iPhone from yourself or something like that. And um, <clears throat> then the more specific we can be as a general rule with the that first part, the observation, then the easier the rest of the process is. So rather than than trying to hold the whole complex issue of how I raised my kids or how I was with my uh, earlier uh, relationship or. Um, yeah, those are the big ones. Yeah, those, we want a little one. Yeah, for practice, Just, you yeah. know, I, I, I wore the wrong shoes. You know, my or... socks didn't match. <laughs> yeah. I told I told Jory I do the dishes and I didn't do it. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'll help okay. make the practice easier. Thanks for asking. Thank you. You bet. Anybody else get stuck anywhere? <clears throat> Generally speaking, there's two things that get people stuck with beneficial regret in my experience. Maybe you've got, you found something else, but one is uh, biting off more than you can chew. To use the um, to uh, explain what you mean. You know, to, in other words, you, you you don't do what I just advised Mary to do. You pick up a, a really big uh, uh, piece to work with instead of a small, teeny tiny piece. Mm -hmm. so that's the number one thing. The second thing that tends to get in the way for people is um, a vocabulary issue. None of us had uh, early training in feelings and needs. At least nobody that I know. I certainly didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, not once in um, all of elementary school, kindergarten, elementary school, or four years of college, did anybody ask me um, or give me any training in identifying feelings or needs? Mm -hmm. You know, um, very typical was to say, how are you? And the answer was fine. And mm -hmm. that was pretty much the level of connection that was uh, often present. Mm -hmm. And so none of us probably got a whole lot of training early so we don't have a very big vocabulary and so um that that's just a structural problem based on our educational system <clears throat> so those are the two things that mostly get stuck so now my second question is did anybody notice any shift happen as you went from the observation to the feelings and the needs did you notice anything uh, um, change in terms of how you were feeling about yourself I see some nodding. So if anybody wants to share what you again, Tim? Yeah, did, as you did the, the first three uh, parts of the process, the observation, the feeling, and the need, <clears throat> did you notice anything shifting in your experience concerning that mistake that you made? And what he means by shifting, <coughs> he's talking about the feelings in your body or the emotions that are arising in relationship to this. Or even the quality of your thing. Go ahead, Kate. Yeah, I felt um, disappointed, sad, and my body felt kind of droopy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so you, you, uh, you notice these feelings, you allowed yourself to feel them. Yeah. 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 It's like giving yourself permission to be human when you are willing to just feel a feeling that you have. Yeah. And then we yeah. have Jeff and then Samira. Samira. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, was, I was happy in this experience to not jump in with judgment about the thing that I did. Just something came to mind, I wrote it down and I was able to hold it, not as good, bad, right, wrong. So that felt good. The feelings that came up were uh, regret, shame, burdened, like a heaviness, sickness, hopeless, lost, worried, anxious. Um, but then looking at the needs thing, I got to choice and competence as some of the reasons why I might have behaved that way. And the, this lightness came. It was like electrifying that was like I was trying to meet a need or something that's good, you know, and um, that really helped me. Uh, so I'm grateful to be prompted to do that. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Thank you for expressing that with such clarity, because that is the experience that 
I'm aware of and many have had when, ah, oh, yeah, now I get it. So thank you for sharing that, Jeff. Yep, because the underlying, the underlying principle here is that everything that you have ever done has been in the service of trying to meet a need. Doesn't mean that everything you did met the need, but that's where self-compassion comes from, is to see that you were, like someone said earlier, every, that you're doing the best you can in the moment to get needs satisfied. And then you learned that your the strategy that you use maybe wasn't effective, and now you're trying to harvest or learn from that experience so that should something like this come up inevitably in the future, maybe you'll peg it, you'll remember it, you'll, you'll have more choice. Samira. Yes, uh, it was um, interesting for me that again, when I uh, wrote my um, observation and again I uh, could feel my uh, my feeling and I again uh, cry about this and I found new uh, needs here it uh, all things happens because I need acceptance acceptance but now I found peace too. And uh, I feel released when I found peace, you know, after, before that I was angry again. Then I found uh, accept, acceptance again, I feel angry. But when I found peace, I feel released and it was great. Thank experience. you. That's, what it, that's exactly you. the description of shift. <clears throat> that's way better than my description of shift. So thank you for sharing it, Samira. We go from this feeling of being separate, of being alienated, of being apart from, of judging ourselves. We go to a sense of, oh, I was needing that fill in the blank. Okay, did it work out the way that I was hoping? No, but at least, would I do it that way again? Probably not. Not if, if I knew then what I'm learning now, I would have made a different choice. And it's always going to be that way. Yeah. So let's carry on. <clears throat> Unless there's anybody that's stuck anywhere, we'll, we'll keep going with the second uh, big piece. Now that you've had some experience of self-compassion, it doesn't have to be complete. <clears throat> it's not going to be like, uh, you know, now, now you're, well, anyway, it's good enough for practice for today. So we'll move on to the second part, which is empathy. <clears throat> so empathy is shifting our attention to the experience of the other person. So the first part, the observation stays the same. They were, they were, so that doesn't change. Only maybe their point of view of what happened was different than your point of view, because their eyes and body was in a different place than yours but the general observation is the same their feelings and their needs might be completely different so you get a chance now to practice empathy which is making a guess <clears throat> it starts with a guess <clears throat> and so first you make a guess about the feelings of the other person what do you imagine was going on in their body after they experienced your action or your inaction. In my case, I, I, my guess of Jory's feelings, and I, she happens to be sitting here, so I get to ask her, that's a luxury. Mm -hmm. So you may remember the moment I'm talking about, I think. When, mm -hmm. yeah. when I started to open up the door. Yeah. And I said, yeah. don't do that. Yeah. yeah, and so I imagine that in that moment, maybe you felt a little startled mm -hmm. and maybe a little um, um, angry or frustrated I think just really startled and confused startled and confused yeah great so first make a guess about the feelings
And then again, shift to needs. What do you imagine the other person was needing in that moment? So I'm imagining for you, Jory, in that mm -hmm. moment that you were startled. Uh, maybe you were, uh, was it that you were needing uh, some clarity or peace? Yeah, that and also safety. Safety, yeah. You know, and just when you said that there was something going on that I didn't know, I needed safety. Safety, yeah, yeah. yeah. By the way, don't worry about guessing right. Most of you probably don't have the luxury of having the other person sitting next to you so you can ask. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the empathy is actually in the guessing. You're shining the, the spotlight of your consciousness on someone else's heart. And so you're just making a guess mm -hmm. about what needs and feelings might be arising in the other person. And this is the awakening of compassion for the experience of another human being. Your actions had an effect. You're, you already acknowledge that. And so now you're, you're making, gaining some insight into why the other person was impacted. What was important to them? In Jory's case, she, I was able to confirm that it was about her need for safety. So, I, my intuition is <clears throat> to pause here and go back to small groups for you guys to talk to each other about what you've done so far. <clears throat> Especially, you might need some support in making guesses about <clears throat> the, the empathy, the empathy guesses for the other person. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to reopen this, the same small groups that we started with. There might be some changes because some people have come and some people have gone. So it might take me a minute or two to uh, rearrange things, but we'll do it this time for um, 15 minutes. <clears throat> so everybody has about five minutes to explore your own experience of self-compassion and then compassion for the other person. So guard your own time, sh do the best you can to share it uh, so that everybody gets a chance to be heard. Five minutes is probably not enough to go really, really deep, but do the best you can with uh with uh, with what you got and uh, we will be back here in about 15 minutes and i can see that i just can add a few people to groups here just oh yeah think about what's alive in you that you would really like to share with other people and you get to be the guardian of your own experience here you share only what you're comfortable sharing. And we'll see you back here in 15 minutes. In 14 minutes, um, you'll, you'll, sit, you'll see that it says it's about to close. You have one extra minute. Turning the recording on. This meeting is being recorded. And I... I'm going to take an exit, but I wanted to say goodbye and not just disappear, although I have disappeared on and off because there's a lot going on right now. And I just want to thank you all for being here and I look forward to seeing you next week as well. All right, sweeties. Thank you. It was nice to meet you. <laughs> thank you.
I'll be more present next week, I imagine, than I have been today. You can I have a kiss sorry. goodbye. Thank you. Oh, okay, he wants a kiss. Okay. Okay, now I feel peaceful. Bye, Jolly. Bye, bye, sweeties. Okay. So thanks for coming, by the way. Thanks for being in partnership with us. So, what'd you learn? What's your? I'd love to hear first around from whoever would like to speak about what you learned from the practice so far today. What did you learn? What are you harvesting? We, Marshall used to call this the harvest. <clears throat> You've all been planting seeds of your own self-compassion. Go ahead, uh, Isabel. As I was supporting Jaya, um, I, it occurred to me how important it is to separate my own savoring, my own needs, and gaining that spaciousness sufficiently for me to breathe out of remorse in before going into somebody else's needs and empathizing with the other person. How separating those two is crucial. Yes, self-compassion before uh, before you can do anything else. It's so hard to develop any kind of compassion or compassionate action until you actually attend to your own uh, feelings, including guilt, shame, whatever might be coming up, regret. Yeah, makes a lot of sense, Isabel. Thank you. And uh, Samata? Uh, I think... I kind of feel that this is such a powerful exercise for me because I, I, I can see almost all of the sort of uh, places where communication wasn't leading to joy and harmony as something where I can, uh, um, if I really look at the other person, feel regret. So somehow it feels like... Uh, um, it is always this choice that one's trying to get certain needs met and can only do so much and certain needs are not met. And then that, so then sort of every sort of disharmonious conversation, it seems to me that if we really look at it, at the end of it, there is this, 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 this feeling of, okay, I could do so much only like this. In other words, your the insight that I'm catching is you were doing the best you could to attend to needs and you've developed you're developing some sense of patience that we don't have to get every single need met in every single moment we can just to attend to the needs that we can and forgive ourselves for not quite getting to all the needs yet something like that uh for I would like to forgive myself, yes, but I think the, the, the awareness that it can only be this much, that it cannot be more for my reasons, because I'm not able to meet the other person's needs and their reasons, they are not able to meet mine. So then in, in any, any, any conversation where it didn't go with full harmony, that we aren't fully satisfied, there is this space of sort of this this thing that we are talking about today and that's 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 powerful insight for me i mean i would love to forgive all of them but i'm waiting to see I, i'm not even sure we, i mean there's also always going to be this regret right that i couldn't stretch more to do that also yeah so i'm not i'm not sure that forgiving i mean i wish i could be a god or goddess yeah that would be great Yes, that, that's a that's a beautiful aspiration that there another certified trainer um, that I really enjoy is a uh, Sarah Payton <clears throat> and she she um, has been a, a, an important colleague for me <clears throat> and she talks about this empathy guess that you just gave yourself and she calls it an impossible dream empathy guess and so just to be with that that the beauty of that impossible dream to actually be able to stretch yourself infinitely to always be able to say yes and and what what a wonderful contribution you can make to the world to just be with that deep that deep need to contribute and that longing to to be as fully engaged as you possibly can yeah yeah thank, thank you. you 
Thank you. And uh, Tanya? Yes. Well, for me, Sarah Payton is a goddess, but <laughs> um, I, what, what came for me was this feeling of relaxation into what happened and, and letting go of uh, even, re even regret. I mean, regret that the other person was harmed. But when I thought about what, what beautiful need I was trying to achieve, I realized that despite my lack of capacity at the moment, I was attempting to connect and support the other person. And, and I failed miserably at both, but uh, getting in touch with the beautiful need that I was trying to meet really kind of cleaned up a lot of the, uh, I guess, guilt about it. Mm -hmm. So that was that was a nice that was a nice experience. No, oh, thanks, Tanya. Yeah, I like the way you say it. Cleaned up the guilt. The regret remains. <laughs> Regret's actually um, a life-serving experience. It's life telling us that we missed an opportunity to contribute, and now we get a chance to learn from it. So my motto is um, I, I, I vow to um, continue to make mistakes from now on. I just hope they're different mistakes than the ones I've already made. <laughs> uh, Roya. Yes, hi, thanks a lot for the great exercise. And what I found out was that when my need was not met and I had an action, I caused the other person to have a lot of needs not met. Like if I had like three, four needs that if, because it wasn't met, I left or I, I did some action. I harmed the other person and the other person did not have a lot of his uh, needs met. I don't know if, I, if I'm clear or not. It's, it was such a like sad moment to to yeah. realize that and uh, although you know definitely i would do this differently right now but you say you know regret stays yeah i'm hoping that the guilt goes and i'm hoping this exercise and a lot of exercise like this mm -hmm. but so far i'm so thankful for that yeah. part of the exercise that I did. Thank what you. I'm, what I'm really catching, Roya, is um, the in, that underneath your insight <clears throat> is an acknowledgement of interdependence. That when we behave in a way that, uh, that, that is a missed opportunity to contribute to needs, our needs are not met, as well as the needs of the other person. And that, um, that one of the big sources of conflict in our world is that unaddressed harm tends to come back in the form of either revenge or <clears throat> something called revanche. <clears throat> and um, th th because there's this, this deep need to redistribute resources. And we think that if it's our job to, to do it, <clears throat> we, we go for revenge. And of course, revenge is, this, is a seed of violence. And revanche is, is similar. It's usually when there's a there's some kind of a systemic intervention to try to balance, uh, but without connection. So it's in, imposed on people. And it just leads to more resentment, more unmet needs. So it becomes this cascading event. And when we take care of our regret, <clears throat> our guilt and transform it into regret, as we'll keep going when we keep going next week with part two of this, we'll see that <clears throat> there are there are options, there are actions that we can take from now on to address this in a way that can serve life and lead to more needs being met at less cost from now on. So that's what that, that's a little teaser for how we'll continue next week. Does that feel complete for you, Roya? Yes, except that the revenge was kind of, uh, uh, I didn't understand totally the, the yeah, revenge. Uh, terminology 
Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's, a, it's a new word for most people, and I actually feel a little regret for bringing it up. But it's such an important concept, uh, and, and um, maybe I'll, I'll bring it up a little bit more next week. Uh, and you can you can Google it, um, revanche. <clears throat> I think it's a French word, R E V A N C H E. <clears throat> but the um, uh, if if it's basically a systemic approach to balancing harm but it usually happens without connection. So, um, you know, the, so the, the classic example would be what happened at the end of World War I, which at the time we thought was the Great War, right? We thought it was the war to end all wars. But when, uh, when the Allies uh, had their big treaty at the, the Treaty of Versailles, they, uh, it ended up being um, an experience of, 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 of really humiliation for the Germans uh, because uh, their, all of their resources uh, without any connection were basically taken away and redistributed to the, to the winners. And that actually was the seed for World War II and because that resentment built up caused all kinds of economic chaos in germany and blah 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 you know the whole story of world war ii and it was because of this you know this this beautiful need to redistribute resources but it ended up coming from from the from from punishment rather than from connection and so we all paid the price uh, as the as the world with uh, however many millions of people died in world war ii so we can talk more Thank about you. that if it seems important. Thanks, Roya. Oh, yep. Joya? Thanks, Jim. So I noticed today, this uh, the instance I had in mind, I have journaled about it. I had gone through it myself, and I have been practicing NBC. So I thought I, uh, I was wondering why it was coming back to me. And I realized today, that when when uh, the life happening is more than just unmatched socks and stuff like that, sometimes you need somebody else to hold that space for empathy. Like what I was doing for myself wasn't enough. And when Isabella uh, Isabel uh, did it for me today, I think I just felt very seen and heard. And I think when I was doing it for myself, I had a conflicting thing that, no, you can't, you know, you did something wrong. Just own up. And uh, when I think when I was held, uh, that empathy buddy thing that happened actually gave me a lot of uh, release and groundedness. So I, I realized that that part of uh, beneficial regret, if it is a big life happening, uh, may do well, if you can do well, if you go to an empathy buddy and hear it from them and be held for a while. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful expression of the power of empathy how when we're when another person can be present for us as we process our regret it can really open our hearts so that we can uh, find the resources that we need in order to go go from now on thank you ajaya and leslie i saw your hand up and then it went down i might have actually accidentally put it down leslie are you still here Would you like to yes. say yes yeah go ahead i just had a question uh it just popped into my mind about when we have an argument in my family that I live with and my mom says, uh, well, don't worry about it or I let it go. And then I accept that. Like if there's some something, it seems like there's something I'm missing. I don't even get an opportunity to express beneficial regret. Um, it's, yeah, I'm not sure how to deal with that. Yeah, yeah. So there's something unfinished for you, and you're longing for a sense of connection with mom in that case. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm relieved, you know, that she's not still angry at me. And there it is, it does feel unfinished. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one possibility would be to do it with a, a friend, an empathy buddy. So, for example, <clears throat> uh, if I was your mom, what would you say to me? Um, yeah, I would say I regret, you know, um, what I said to you yesterday, and I wish I wouldn't have said it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So when you remember the conversation we had yesterday, 
you said some things that if you had it to do over again, you would have said different things or not said anything at all. Is that right? Yeah, I would have said it differently. I wouldn't, I would have said it with more, uh, with kindness instead of anger and rage. Yeah. Yeah. So when you spoke, you spoke from a, from a place of being really emotionally activated. And if you had it to do over again, you would have, I'm imagining you would have liked to have calmed down, got connected to what was really important to you and then said it in a way that was more kind. Is that right? Yes. Yes. And more respectful. Yes. Yeah. So you didn't meet your own needs for kindness and respect. And you're really wanting to own that with me right now. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So would you like to know how I feel after hearing that from you? Yes. Yeah. It's it's complicated, I notice. I'm really, really touched. I I have a sense of really of of care that you wanted to approach me and let me know. And I also feel a little embarrassed because I, I, it's, I have a really high value of letting it go. And so having it come back up again, I just noticed a little bit of embarrassment in me that, that, uh, that it matters, it still matters to me. So how do you feel hearing that? Um, I'm curious, uh, I feel, yeah, I, I'm wondering if um, it's just really, difficult for you to even talk about it with me it is you're right it, it's yeah. just you know it it's just easier it's easier just to let it go you know and i i just notice it's a pattern in me i just avoid i just i just i'm conflict averse i always have been and probably always will be and so i i, I just like it when things go smoothly between us so I, i'm with you i would like it to be more kind too and you know actually you know what <clears throat> like i said it was complicated it's bringing up my own regret, Leslie, of all the times in our life that I haven't been kind with you in a way that I would really like. Yeah. So I noticed Thank my you. own sadness about that. Yeah, and I want you to know that I feel really sad about it. I wish I could um, do it differently. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Maybe we'll we'll endeavor to do it from now on in a different way. We'll do the best we can from now on. How does that sound to you? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> so stepping out of the role play, I just wonder how you feel now when you think about about the whole experience, Leslie, just from kind of more of a observer point of view after having had this experience. Well, I just I feel more settled, like something like shifted in my body and that I feel like there's hope, mm -hmm. you know, some kind of hope that I could connect with her differently in the future. Yeah. Um, especially after we have a conflict. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie, for bringing it up. I appreciate your, your willingness to share it and then do the role play with me. Yeah, thank you. If anybody else had any needs met from Leslie's being vulnerable and sharing this, would you just kind of wave or do it with a heart or a thumbs up? Yeah. So Leslie, just look around at seeing how your your contribution really supported us. Okay, wonderful transition place to the end of the last five minutes we spend um, with each other. I share some information that hopefully will make your life more wonderful. So I'll be putting some things into the chat. Uh, first thing that I will put is if you're not getting emails from us and you wish you were, then you can follow this link that I'll put into the chat. And that will get you signed up to our email list, which means you'll get uh, usually one email per week from us. <clears throat> and you can, there's a little button at the bottom of the email if you ever get tired of, of uh, getting emails from us you can always um, easily unsubscribe. Second link that I will put in is Jory um, loves to do one-on-one -on -one work. It would be maybe similar to what I just did with Leslie, only for maybe a, a half an hour or maybe an hour. And um, so if you would like to um, go to jory.youcanbook.me 
uh, you can see if there's an appointment that might work for you uh, in order to have some time. Jory does, uh, Jory and I do all of our nonviolent communication work in the spirit of compassionate giving and receiving, which basically means a gift economy. So uh, we don't charge for our work, but if you want to, uh, we give it freely and with joy. And if and we're also willing to receive any gifts that you would like to receive, to give back. <clears throat> the next two links are our website where you can get to uh, the recordings from the calls and also our YouTube channel, which is called Radical Compassion. And um, if you if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you get a little notice that lets you know when the when the new um, new videos are updated <clears throat> each week. Usually it takes me a day or two, sometimes longer. Uh, I wrote a book about a year ago, and um, I'm, I'm uh, happy about how many books we've sold. And of course, being an author, I want to sell more books. And so <clears throat> if you would like to buy the book, you could probably get it shipped free to you. It's called Pathways to Nonviolent Communication. <clears throat> you can just Google my name, Jim Mansky, and you're, you'll probably find the book and um, probably get it shipped to you for free, even if you live um, in a faraway place <clears throat> using one of those um, online booksellers. Finally, um, you can donate to this class <clears throat> by uh, using uh, um, uh, this link here and just giving money directly, <clears throat> excuse me, to the Center for Nonviolent Communication. So we consider this class a fundraiser for the Center for Nonviolent Communication, which is a, um, a organization that was started by Marshall in 1989. If you decide to give us money personally, you can just uh, use my email address, which I'll put into the um, chat here. Um, and you can use PayPal to do that but I'll say it out loud too for the recording. It's MVC trainer at gmail.com, MVC trainer at gmail.com. <clears throat> and this year we've raised, gosh, maybe I'm just going to guess $8,000, $10,000 into <clears throat> this practice group. And we have used that uh, to support nonviolent communication, uh, groups all around the world, especially people in the global majority that can't otherwise afford uh, NBC training. We, we, uh, we pay for lots of scholarships for folks like that. So if you know somebody who could use some support like that, let us know. And with that, we'll come to conclusion for today. <clears throat> Next week, we'll continue uh, with uh, beneficial regret. And we will talk about uh, let what we I did with Leslie was a preview of what we'll do next week. Basically, an opportunity to share our regret with another person in a, in a way that doesn't make us wrong and doesn't put them on the spot or make any demands on them. <clears throat> so, with that, I'll turn the recording off. <clears throat>